Hello there. My name is Mark the Canardian, and this is episode 70 of the Holocron Chronicles. I'm joined, as always, by my trusty co-pilot, the handsomest co-pilot in all the land, Charlie Carden. Charlie, how you doing? Pew, pew, pew! I'm good. <laughs> I love it. And, uh, oh, I'm very excited about this episode. Think back yeah. to 1996. Some called it the Summer of Todd. Oh, as a matter of fact, Speaking look who happens of... to be in the studio with us. Uh, the virtual go. studio, as we're not actually together. Yes, that is uh, my PIC, my hetero life mate of almost 30 years, Todd Extra from Secret Friends and Co-op Mode and the state of Minnesota. Just don't get enough of us on our other shows. Like lightsaber Todd, noise. Know, yeah, that was fine. Yeah. Where 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 That's my preference. <laughs> That's I could do a horrible fair. Chewbacca. Uh, oh, here you got it. You got it. I can do other noises. You got to take a drink of water and go. That's the, that's a horrible Chewbacca. I can I do just... slice stone maybe too. <laughs> Patreon bonus episode. We all have a couple of drinks and Star get together Wars and noises. do our best Star Wars <laughs> noises and impressions. Oh, uh, I want to hear everyone's. Uh, Here, wait. Are you ready? Are you ready for my George Lucas? There we go. Thank you. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. Uh, <laughs> needs more Todd, thanks for joining us. Needs more three <laughs> thanks Roll for joining the, us, Todd. Roll out the special edition. Very excited to have you. And yes, Charlie uh, just kind of hinted at it. We are going to be talking about Shadows of the Empire tonight. Uh, this is, we, we've talked about it before. This was not our plan. There's a new show out that we would love to talk about, but we're not going to talk about that while there's a bunch of really serious strike stuff going on. Uh, so we are going to talk about really old stuff instead. And if you're like me, you have vague memories of this series and we're going to dive right into it but before we do that we have to thank the people that make this show happen and that is our patreon supporters uh so big thank you to our best bud jamie prinky our bff tier sean stella and henry nias missy merchant and andy milliken and the newest patreon member handsome man who's been all over the place all over i think on every single one of our shows has yep, he been on yep, this yep, one yep. if he hasn't been on this one he no that. yeah we need to fix that on the show let's let's Luke, fix it call it the fixer if you're listening let's uh let's make something happen tell me what you want to talk about and we'll make it happen uh luke lore aka the insipid ghost thank you so much for becoming a patreon member and uh he was he was recently on um on co or uh, on on seeker friends he was on, he, he's been on co-op he's with a, us. He's, he's been he on did, co-op a few times. He's done some secret friends. I think he kind of became a resident DC guy, didn't he do? Mm -hmm. Not the Flash, but maybe maybe Black Adam? I don't know. He did something with us. Yeah, Luke does come on on occasion. He's a big Star Trek fan, big Bob, Babylon 5 fan, yeah. Star Wars mm -hmm. fan. He loves DC. He's very much agnostic to one fan fandom, which is great. Mm -hmm. gotcha absolutely perfect absolutely. perfect uh perfect uh, commercial for luke laura now available for weddings and bar mitzvahs just hit him <laughs> up on x <laughs> absolutely uh thanks luke yeah you can follow him uh, on on x as insipid ghost and uh yeah check him out um todd i think we've introduced you a couple of times on this show now i don't think there's any questions that we need to catch up on Charlie and I did our big catch up episode where people can learn all about how we got into star Wars, which 69 episodes in, I don't think we had done that. Cause there were things about Charlie that I did not know until last week. Open book. Open it was book. wild. Mm. Wild. Uh, so that was a fun talk. If you haven't listened to that one, go back and check it out. Cause you learn all about our past, but Todd, you asked a couple of questions last week that I thought, Hey, you're here now. Let's flip them right back on you. And the first one is, what's the worst character in Star Wars? You know, that's a great question because low-hanging fruit is the obvious one. Don't have to talk about that, but I, I this is going to be very unpopular. 
But I think Anakin's the worst character. Oh! Kind of a genuinely bad person who killed a lot of people because mommy didn't, mommy wasn't there for him and, and, and didn't really overcome adversity. He just basically said, adversity, bring it on. I'm going to be worse. Hold on, so hold that, on. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. There's an even hotter take on top of that. Because you said mommy wasn't there, it jumped me right back to Austin Powers singing the song about daddy wasn't daddy there. <laughs> yes, daddy didn't know because he was talking about uh, his father, Mike no, Kings, a, Nigel Powers. That was daddy. Daddy, daddy wasn't there. there. Yeah. Or okay. that was, you're, if Scotty doesn't know. Scotty doesn't know. <laughs> Euro yeah. trip. All the movies together. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. And the band, most of the band was there and the singer was... Um, it was Matt Damon, wasn't it? Scotty Matt Damon. Know. Yes, it was yeah. Matt yeah. Damon. Yeah. What, what was the was that Saving yeah, Silver? What movie was that? What movie was uh, that? that? Was Euro Trip. Oh, okay. Euro Trip. That's, that's right. Euro Trip. Yeah, yeah. Euro Trip. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, super weird cameo, Matt Damon. Um, so because he's not the singer yeah. of that band, that's a real Keep, band. That that's no, he's in, not. Sorry, I can't no, remember the, weird. Uh, the name of that. Um, so weird. So weird. So Anakin. Holy shit! That's a hot yeah. take. That's a deep thing. I know. Wow. I know. Because every, but I mean, like, he's not redeemable whatsoever. He killed so many bad. I mean, still too many people. He killed how many yeah. children? He's well, you the, all the of them. And, and the only reason, yeah, you don't even know he, what he, he does. Had, Luke was because he was kid, not because he's a nice guy. He redeemed himself for everybody else. He did it for his kid, which I'm like, yeah, you owe your kid something because you essentially, you know, at the last minute, left he and did almost it. killed your mom, and you almost killed my mother. Um, yeah. and then yeah, so he's not a good guy. I don't care. It's like let's not repeat history. He's a bad dude. Let's not talk about him anymore. Moving on. So wow. So Tight. worst are you Tight. are you talking worst as in like he's a terrible person? Kind of worst? Like oh, you know, it's you Mark. wouldn't it, he's, it's not, he's it it that even all of the performances of Anakin as a little kid, as in, and he doesn't have a good performance in the line. Even, so even, it's like even, all kind of like even like Matt Lantner in the animated, I mean, I thought that I thought those before he was okay no. in the Clone Wars. He seemed like he was a good guy. No, no? you had to spend six seasons to make him highly, kind of likable. High, it takes that much effort, marginally adequate. It's like a rehabilitated anyway, boyfriend. Big, but, big decline from James <laughs> James Earl Jones. Come on. Right. Well, you, so was Padme like the excuse maker? Like, oh, he, you know, you really got to get to know him first. I can change really it. Got to get, yeah, I can change it. I, uh, yeah, mm. got to get to know him. He's not like that when we're, it's just the two of us. No. K- no. Kill, killing children. Yeah, I've oh, had it's Padme, worse for everybody, Anakin. but hey, 85 years not of everybody sure. from Star Wars fandom saying, I can change him. I can make him a good right. guy. Right. Yeah, Pad- Padme, Anakin, not the ship. Definitely Kanan, Hera. They did it right as far as like Jedi romance right. kind of thing goes. You know, if you know, you know. Um, so that, like, yeah, holy crap. I, I'm still like, I'm still real. Like you just not That's a good Todd. My, Todd, my Todd has to, boy, Todd's just Todd just going right against just, the grain. Just, uh, 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 I'm, uh, I'm hurting. I'm ready to just call this show for the week. Yeah. Wow. Uh, but I'm not going to do that because I the also show must need go to on. ask. Yeah. So you can send your hate mail, everyone at T Oxtra on x or anywhere else uh or join our discord and just dump on todd for a little oh, bit just, but we're also we'll, we'll, we'll make a server channel for that todd hate <laughs> dump todd on hate todd mail <laughs> i love it uh Call me the Sarlacc pit. Thing... Todd Sarlacc pit. <laughs> yes that needs to be a discord channel like, all your right bad takes go in there uh, all your bad <laughs> the weirdest thing in star wars that you want more of todd let's hear your hot take on this one Oh, boy. Uh, you know, it's something that really has not been touched upon uh, largely in Star Wars, except for the 80s. And it's kind of funny. It's Ewoks. They are weird because Fuck they're sake. cannibals. Do, 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 they they do, 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 were in one do, do, do. movie and then we got just them in TV and like with two TV, with two, two TV movies and then the um, animated series. I mean, if anybody needs kind of maybe a, a, a resurrection, a, a yeah. it's the Ewoks and they're I mean, weird, but I love them. That little baby Ewok is so cute. Bring back the Ewoks. Come on. I mean, we did literally get a five second cameo of Wicket back at the end of uh, the rise of Skywalker. Rise of Skywalker. Cause they were yep. doing your return of the Jedi. Like uh, here's, you know, kind of postcards from the edge going around the galaxy. And you saw Wicket with his intended and you can tell he's older. He's like, you know, he had, 
he had like big long hair. Maybe it was in a ponytail. Maybe he had a guitar slung across his back. Like he was an old man. He was like he was like the Grateful Dead of Ewoks at that point. Mm-hmm. But he was like yub nub yub nub. I think he probably put the Paul Mall cigarette down. And he was like yub nub. Yeah, you know, man. I think he became yeah. a rocker myself, but I don't know. Deadhead. I don't know. Um, the fact that you dumped on Anakin <laughs> and then said you want more Ewoks, I just kind of want to roast you open over an open flame. Yeah. Uh, right now you and turn sacrifice him into you a, to t- C-3PO. Turn him into a pinata and see Who what had a bigger up? hand in saving the the, the Rebellion? And defeating the Empire than the Ewoks. It was a very unlikely <laughs> save. Han would have been dead. Leia would have been dead. I mean, come on. Well, you know what's interesting is you put together Anakin with the Ewoks. It was a two-front war. And it was those two, well, it was a group yeah. of people and then an individual that that worked it together yeah. and ended the Battle of Endor, which, you know, if you're familiar with Star Wars, that wasn't the real end of the rebel- the Empire. I mean, as we've seen, they continue to go on, and it was about another yeah, year. Right. It's so just like taking out Hitler was the end of World War II. We know. Right. They had to drop yeah. a nuclear bomb on. I know. Uh, I saw I saw whatever, Oppenheimer. Wherever Jabba's people, you know, you know, wherever Where Jabba's uh, was. Yeah. They, they, <laughs> they, and then, they, said, they dropped a nuke on Jabba. It was yeah. over. <laughs> and Mo- Moff Gideon was still out there doing his whatever with the Darksaber. So, you know. Why did I agree to both of you in the same room again? And this is the third <laughs> time. I know. Because I, I, I think, I, I think honestly, we just pare it down. We're like, uh, we bring Todd <laughs> in and he'll, Todd will bring a can of gasoline and actually light his stu- his house on fire just for the purpose of the show. Yep. Remember, the first hit was free. Yeah, Todd is Todd is uh, that that gif of Elmo standing in front of the flames with his arms up. That's Todd. <laughs> and I'm the dog sitting in the house that's on fire. This is fine. This is fine. Coffee. Everything's fine. This is fine. This is fine. Oh this is man, fine. So it's like. Charlie's like, just feed him. Keep feeding him. Keep feeding the fire. Right. Oh no, I'm the guy with the. Po- I, I'm uh, I'm Stephen Colbert with the popcorn, or <laughs> Michael Jackson with the popcorn from the from the thriller video. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> For someone that so doesn't that's... like Star Wars, I care too much. Uh, I care yeah, too much. Exactly. If, if Todd has one weakness, is that he's too real. No, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too honest. <laughs> oh, oh, I care so too much. Yeah. Oh my god. Well, <laughs> That's a oh, topic. Star Wars job guys... interviews. Do that next time. Star Wars interview. job interviews. <laughs> where do you where do you, where do you see yourself? Where do you see yourself in five years? Well, maybe blowing up a couple of planets with a giant super laser. I got goals. Always you should like job of the hut interviews his staff. Yeah. And so, what do you do in my menagerie? I stand around a lot and do this. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I wear a loincloth and hold a big axe. Uh, <laughs> It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, it's fine. loincloth. It's good. Uh, it's a good dental plan. Yeah, yeah. Those, are, those were some pearly white chompers on those Gamorrean cards. Right. That's for sure. Good. Uh, before this goes any further down that rabbit hole, <laughs> let's take a step back into 1996 when Lucasfilm decided to sign on to a project. I'm not going to say they decided on a project because this was kind of p- pitched to Lucasfilm and Todd, you said you had some funny tidbits about how all this came together. So I kind of want to hear those first off. Cause this was like yeah, the yeah. first multimedia release for star Wars. They basically touted this as like a new star Wars event without a movie, but it was everything but a movie. We had comic books. Uh, the novel was the main crux right. of everything. Then we right. had comic, we, we, I think we it. all read it back then. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, video games, trading cards, soundtrack, toy line, a soundtrack for a movie that didn't exist, which is wacky, a soundtrack for a book, basically. Um, mm-hmm. This was an interquel. Mm-hmm. Interquel? Yeah. In between, basically, in Mid-quel? between. Mid. Uh, mid so, basically, what happened in between Empire and Return of the Jedi told the story. It's a Clone there. Wars. Yeah, it's a Clone Wars. <laughs> it was it was kind of yeah. Clone Wars before without yeah. the show, right? Like it was yeah. uh, it was one of those kind of things. So concept well, that we're pretty familiar with now, right? But was new at the pretty time. new back at the time. Now in, let in, me in the... let me jump in and paint a picture of yep. of the pl- of the players who were involved back in 1996, and subsequently, 
the spring of 1996 is when the expression secret friends unite or secret friends came in the vernacular myself and John Sear, who was our, our other college roommate, the, the subsequent fall after this all happened, we shared a dorm room. We had a loft. We were breaking it down. And I've told the story before, but it was either me or Todd. I wrote secret friends on a piece of the wood. And I think it was me. And Todd came along and said, it was oh, you. he said, it was oh, you, that's Charlie. beautiful. And he draws a little Luke heart. Said, what the hell yeah. is secret friends? And why is there a heart around it? <laughs> but what's interesting still, if you jump forward a couple of years, I have a photograph of you and I, we were at your parents' house is probably in the year 2000 holding an old book that says secret friend. I, I, I will, I, I will, this has to be committed. So the whole secret friends thing came around. We were breaking this loft down. We all went home for the summer. We live in you know, Todd and John and I live in, in different parts of Michigan. Um, still trying to find ways to hang out, but this book came out and I'm, I'm looking, it was definitely a summer release. I was looking for a date. Um, but we all, I believe stumbled upon it kind of at the same time when we were, we were talking about it. And I know that summer, the three of us went to a weird L concert. April 1st, we yeah. 1996. Yeah, there you go. So it was before, it was about a month before school got out. Um, so we all went back to our separate places, summer jobs, whatever it is. And you're right. We were then flooded by the book, which was a hardcover. So it was like a book book. Um, I, I, you know, Todd and I are big comic guys. I know I read the comic probably after the fact in a collected trade, which I know I still have. And of course, you can also find it on Marvel Unlimited in the States, probably Comixology if you ever want to uh, dig into it. The video game you guys are going to talk about, the trading cards I have a pack because of Todd, the soundtrack, I'm, I feel like I've heard bits and pieces of it. And the toys were the best part. We all enjoyed the toys. Now, Todd, roll with me here if I might, including, uh, Luke in like some kind of weird red armor. Uh, Shizor, which I have, uh, you know, I it's on the other side of my studio, but I have a vintage Shizor figure. I also have a Dash Rendar figure, which I gave Todd and he probably threw in the garbage. I mailed it to him about a year ago. It was a, it was a, oh, 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 yes, yes. Still in the package. It, well, oh, unfortunately, the glue has not oh, God, survived God. well. But, uh, but yeah, if you are... want pictures of all of the toys that yeah. are involved, you can kind of see them oh, behind me. my background. I, I did take, I probably had the same issue with Shizor. He's oh. out of the bubble and he's hanging from the wire over there. But I put his card, I, I pinned it to the wall because the drywall is very soft down here. So uh, Shizor endures. But there was a weird Chewbacca. There was a reissue of Leia as, uh, as Bausch uh, in that same outfit. Uh, obviously, no Han. Uh, there might have been a stormtrooper. I think that was about it. But this was Power of the Force 2. It was about a year after that line first came out. The figures were even uglier if comparatively to the Kenner figures that were 10 years prior. Um, mm. But it was it was this weird phenomenon. And the fact now, Star Wars itself had only been back in print, uh, for lack of a better term, because the um, in 1980. Seven, the Marvel series had ended. There was this gulf. And then we got the first uh, Steve Zahn novel in 92, 93. Steve so Zahn. Was, isn't it Steve Zahn? Wasn't that the guy's name? Timothy Zahn. Oh, Steve, Steve, Steve is his cousin. Steve Shut Zahn up. is a Hollywood actor, as we know. In yeah. Oh, my God. Wouldn't it, be great? wouldn't it be great if it was really Steve Zahn from that thing you do? That's his pet which, name. Which yeah. also yeah. came out That's in 1996. It's all coming back together. Um, but, yeah, it was um, it was a whole thing. But yeah, anyway, that that's my take. Um, that's that, that's my that's my setting the stage. So we're in the summer. We're consuming all this media. Todd, what happens then? What what do you got? Well, it was interesting because this was Lucas Art, Lucas Film, Lucas Art. Essentially, were kind of in a hibernation mode. The last thing I believe they did from a theatrical live action perspective, I believe, was the last Ewok film. There were two Ewok films. That was the last live action thing we got out of it. They did yeah. Ewoks and droids, those cartoons. Yeah. And that was essentially it for anything on a screen you could watch. Um, so Lucas uh, film literally was doing nothing. They weren't really producing anything. Uh, Lucas, I mean, obviously did Willow after, and then after that, it was, they just kind of ceased to put out content. So it, there was rumors, obviously the special edition was coming out. So there was a fervor of what else can we do? We got, obviously George is ready to get back into this. So mm -hmm. um, a lot of people took advantage of that at the company. And yeah. it was really uh, a publishing director 
who, you know, publishing, you know, there was a lot of stuff they were doing, comics and other things, but nothing really got big uh, marketing behind it. So Lucy mm -hmm. Autry Wilson met with Bantam and essentially went behind kind of Lucas's back and kind of came up with a promise to say, we need an event. And so they kind of got some momentum and said, let's do an event, but we're going to make it multi-tiered. So we're like Mark said, all those different pieces. But the fact is that um, if the special editions weren't going to happen, I don't think mm. we would have gotten this. Right. I don't think you would have right. gotten an event this big. There were, I'd say video games were probably the biggest part of Star Wars with a budget because you did get games. You did get like yeah. the, the Yoda it, desktop I adventures. Fighter, you X did get. Kind of uh, you remember that, that, that yeah. Activision game that you saw on the back of, of uh, you know, Marvel Comics or other comics in the 80s, I think even when the movies were still coming out. So I think between really set between th this time period uh, between uh, Empire and Jedi, there was, you know, your not even a side scroll. It was one of, it was like Pong. It was like, here come the beep, beep, beep. You get to shoot the, the walkers, like the battle of Hoth. Like, here's your ship. I just, I, I don't remember. I just, maybe I've seen footage, but I definitely remember the ads. Yes. Yeah. There was a we lot there. Stuff so, like, uh, like X-Wing TIE fighter, X-Wing yeah. versus TIE Fighter came out in 97, so not mm. too long yeah. after this so big event kind of thing. Yep. But it was, was like uh, 93, 94 for X-Wing and then uh, 90, like 94 for TIE Fighter. Right. Um, yeah, so, so like there, there was were, a mismatch yeah, video of like, games. yeah, Star Wars was very thin there and Dark Horse had the license. They were doing some things like Dark Empire um, was kind of a not – canon just like the zon stuff wasn't canon but it was very popular at the time so there was a there was a fervor for star wars anything that was out there this is pre-internet so there wasn't a lot of information you could glean to get new information on like there would today there was like starlog magazine and maybe somebody's blog Ooh, that was about it, Love it. <laughs> but um but then you know they said well we're gonna make this a book focus to basically build the event around and they hired steve perry which if you watch this oh, Sherry. exactly I there was that screenshot i share with you where they oh, made a joke they said i'm sure he's heard this joke many times low-hanging fruit are often the sweetest and the funniest so oh. but he decided that he was going to ignore everything else but um the uh the, the splinter of the mind's eye and the original trilogy film mm, it. so it was so all that, he considered that canon. was his his canon now the splinter of the Correct. mind's eye has anybody else ever checked that one out it's a novel no. in uh, 1978 there was a more modernized uh comic version of it which i really enjoyed the art out of it but it's basically luke and leia clash uh crash on like a mud bog planet and vader tracks them down but it has it is the first mention of a kyber crystal was kind of the driving force of that story. So check it out. It was, I, I remember, I, it's another one I'm sure I have a trade, but again, Comixology or, um, or Marvel Unlimited, if you have access to it, you can, you can find that story because all of the, and Mark, I know up in Canada, you guys don't have Marvel Unlimited, but all of the Star Wars stuff is there um, right. otherwise, including this, including, including the comics that tie back into this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was interesting. It was perfect storm because, uh, Lucas at the time, they had a video game arm. They had obviously uh, a publishing uh, area within the company. They had film. They had also had uh, opportunity to, to basically bring in an orchestration and build, uh, you know, a soundtrack for this. Right. And all these Which things kind of gelled together to Apple make Music an event. Or Spotify. Exactly. Can, it's can there now. Oh, okay. oh, yeah. You can yeah, stream it. Okay. You can listen to oh, it. Um, what you should have been doing is playing the soundtrack and reading the book. Charlie. <sighs> so it would have been your life would have been complete. Oh, back in the day, uh, I mean, yes. that, that must be when I, because again, much like anything like this, particularly in pre-internet days, we enjoyed it for a while and then it kind of bled off into non-existence. And then without the support of the current regime, the Disney regime, which took over in 2014, this, you know, th this got decanonized at that point. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we'll go on to illustrate that there are subtle little ways that things have kind of crept their way back in, uh, much yeah. like over in Star Trek. Look. 23 minutes and 40 seconds before I made a Star Trek reference. That's a long, they, long they've, they've kind of done that with, uh, with lower decks in reference to the, the old Star Trek, uh, Saturday morning cartoon from the seventies, they'll grab something little and kind of sneak it back in just for, just for giggles. So, yeah. And, 
And the funny part is the soundtrack, if you look at the tracks, and this was composed by Joel McNeely, who actually did music for the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles. He's It was performed by the Royal Scottish National Orchestra. Um, but if you back in the day when track lists would come out for anything, oh, yeah. you had to watch out for spoilers because it would be like, right. Caesar dies, and then this happened. And it's like, they, did that, they did that really, <laughs> really poorly with the soundtrack to The Phantom Menace because one of the last tracks was Qui-Gon's mm-hmm. Funeral. First of all, you look at that like, favorite. who the hell is Qui Gon, and why do I care if he's having a funeral if you've not seen it? So, exactly. Yeah. And the greatest part about this, this is probably the most sexual uh, Star Wars has ever been. There's oh, a track on here called "The Seduction of the Princess Seduction Leia." Of Princess We're like Leia. everybody, all these teenagers, are like, what's what? Because oh, wow. she, yeah, yeah. she's or is he's a he's a uh, to give you a little background. He's a feline, and I'm just I'm riffing this from memory. So if I get it wrong, he's a feline. He's the head of one of the big crime syndicates called the Black Sun, which has been recanonized uh, within the animated programs. I think both Clone Wars and Rebels. Um, she's or himself. I feel like they there's kind of been a nod and a wink to getting him back in. But anyway, the so deal with drop in. Um... The, uh, of the comic with uh, what's your face from Solo? Uh, the um, you're talking about the Crimson Rain with uh, Kira. That's the one. Okay, got She's the, the uh, Amelia Clark's there. character. Um, yeah. But the Feline are essentially uh, a kind of lizardy race, green skin, no hair, uh, big fancy robes. Todd would love it. Todd's a big fancy robe guy. If you never met him, love. I mean, he he likes his finds. <laughs> But uh, th- their their main characteristic is pheromones. They are irresistible to the opposite sex or what have you. And uh, there are big passages in the book about how Shizor is basically some kind of man whore. He pumps and dumps women. It happens several times in the book. And uh, they, they you know talk about how he's got secret exits and uh, how the women never come back. And one, one of them did try to catch back up with him and he had her killed. And he's just, again, much like Anakin Skywalker, not a very nice guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he and said they're he, just all a means to an end kind of thing. Exactly. It's, it's very, and he it's his, his the other main crux of what he does in the story is that he is trying to weasel his way into the heart of the emperor and kind of cut uh, Vader out of it. So it's kind of like like April and I are watching The Office right now. It's when Andy came along and tried to get between uh, Michael and Dwight. There you go. So yeah. So Shizor is Great the analogy. nerd dog. He's the nerd dog. Mm. great analogy yeah and he's really trying like he figures out that luke is vader's son yep and and really starts trying to play that uh to his favor and and um he kind of kill luke where where vader failed and he knows that would piss off vader but also kind of please the emperor it's it's a whole yeah they're they're playing a whole lot of angles with this it's it's really interesting so yeah Todd, uh, we, we heard uh, some of Charlie's kind of memories from when this came out. Do you have similar memories? Like you guys, I mean, you were together. This is, this is uh, you know, big crux of like the secret friend group. When right. This yeah, it was. was. Yeah. And again, back in those days, we, we emailed when you could dial up and read your email. Uh, we talked on the phone. You know, and we all hung out a couple. I know you and John hung out a couple times that summer because you guys live closer than I did. He lives in Metro Detroit area. You grew up. Well, in we read Metro- the book yeah. before college got out, so we I think we all finished it and read it before college got it, out because college got out. Oh boy. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think I think we did because you know we're in college. What what else would we be doing? Are we reading a Star Wars book, not studying for class, right? Um, or or you know <laughs> carrying on with girls because who does that? <laughs> you read text or you exactly. Gotta, yeah. But it was an exciting time because truly there was so little. Star Wars, and we were all passionate fans at the time. So it was really us just really always talking about what could happen, what's going to be next in Star Wars. This is really mm-hmm. exciting because we never had anything like this that was kind of like such big fervor. It was very exciting. It was the same time of the power of the Force figures that came out with yep, Charlie yep, yep. and John, myself. We'd go to Target, look in the aisles, see what toys oh, were coming out. Target. And they weren't great figures, but they still look kind of cool. Like Boba Fett it was, was neat. It was a, um, it was yeah. kind of a step forward from kenner even power of the force 
one, which was that was the end of the Kenner line where they came in a bubble and each one of them had like a little shiny coin. That was like, I think that line mm-hmm. ended in maybe 1985. Um, and then in 1995 is when you got this line back. But it was, yeah, you got the, that whole line was just with the buff Luke and you had Joe, you know, Alea looking like Joe from the Facts of Life. You just, and they all came with like very technically reference for Mark. I th- I think so. Luke came with like a spear gun, you know, because it's like, I don't know, maybe he, Maybe if yeah, he would have had that, it would have been a big deal for him to swing across that chasm. So he came with a lightsaber too, though. He did, but he literally yeah. came with like a spear gun. Yeah, it was like just, the, it was, it was the, very like a crossbow. It was very Tuscan weird. Reader gun, yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. That was my toy was, line. Like that was that was my first. Well, sure, yeah. yeah, that would be a perfect time for you because it's like, hey, these are none of the old heritage figures are still around. So this right. was yeah. really the first, no, was, you know, was, reemergence yeah. of Star Wars that you could buy at the time, and, and it was really cool. Right. Yeah. And, and they were definitely, so definitely a step up. Yeah. 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 And it's so funny hearing your stories because when this all came out, I had no idea what anything was. That's right. I was yeah. 11, 12 yeah. when, when all of this was happening. So like novels, comics, all that kind of stuff, zero knowledge, interest, whatever was happening. You know, I was like maybe getting into goosebumps at that time, but probably still not even there. <laughs> uh, like this was, this was early. So like I had, that toy line that you know with the buff luke and everything else and then i remember i can't remember it was me or my brother one of us had uh i think it was just prince uh she's yeah she's her yeah the green yeah the green dude that was it the green dude in the in the in the the rope the muumu or the robe I i think that was it like as far as this and it was just like a random like it had star wars this one of us got it for like our birthday or christmas or something but that Christmas was N64 and oh, Shadows of the go. Empire was not quite a launch title because that the, this console launched in, uh, I'll say, August or September. Mm-hmm. This but launched in, de- in December. So it was kind of it must have been kind of, a you know, one of those late grabs. But Christmas morning, we wake up and boom, we have an N64 uh, Mario Kart and this game. Yeah. So real Star one Wars. My, like one of the first 3D games I played, a Star Wars video game. I had played Super Star Wars, Super Empire, and Super Return of the Jedi before, but they were all 2D side scrolling games. Yeah, there you go. Cool, but this was like full 3D. It's a new character. There's new stuff. There's some things that I remember, like Boba Fett and Stormtroopers, but like this kind of looks like the Millennium Falcon, but it's not. But I remember this Battle of Hoth. Like that's a really cool stage. Uh, so it was like that for me is my whole memory of this. So when we started talking about doing this episode, I rewatched like Charlie, you you sent like a full replay uh, watch kind of thing of of someone playing through the game i watched all of that i don't think i ever beat boba fett because i remember everything up to that he's the big boss in in the game is he he was kind of like there's a a halfway point or so that so i probably beat a little over half of that game because i like i had specific everything that i was seeing in this replay i'm like i remember that i remember this oh that's something i don't remember finding but like i'd remember that stage anything after boba fett completely new experience for me watching this uh this walk through this replay um it's new yes indeed and it was the same thing like i just got the book i just went through that for the first time ever um i and of course like doing this podcast i had seen the characters or researched the characters before and all that kind of stuff but like this whole experience listening to the soundtrack reading the book the only thing i haven't done so far is dive into the comics and i still intend to do that but like 12 year old me was like this is a video game i straight up did not know this was an event until like probably my 20s yeah well i mean it's just it it, yeah it kind of fell onto the the heap of history because star wars came back to the movie theaters obviously with special editions in the very first part of 1997 so it was jan feb because they released the movies todd we were we were back uh, at school and we were we were living in an off-campus apartment but they released those films three or four weeks apart so you got like a you got mm-hmm. like a january new hope february empire and then march was actually they actually pushed 
the release of Empire further back because New Hope was still killing it at the theater. Yeah. A 30 year old movie was just slaying whatever the hell. I mean, it was probably wow. still coming in number two to, to Titanic because that was such mm. a huge movie then. Or maybe that was the end of 97. Because sure. this was pre this was pre DVD. This was like yeah. the best version you could probably get was Laserdisc. And yeah. that didn't look very good. I mean, unless how many people had a Laserdisc at the time? Not many. So yeah, yeah, this was exactly. to see a a really quality version just from a cleaned up uh, what beautiful exists, yeah, exactly. uh, version and a lot of people were excited for it and a lot of people had never seen it before even though it was rebroadcast on TV you could get it on VHS it yeah. was a unique thing what right. they did though with um, Shadows of the Empire which I thought was really interesting each the book the comic and the game were all from a different perspective Dash right. Rindar that was his story. Uh, right. Obviously, the 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 the, the um, game or the, the 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 novel was kind of a mixed bag because the main character yeah. of that and it's been so long I can't remember was that Leia's viewpoint or was it, it, was, it was a big part of it kind was of but then, jumped, then a, yeah a, another big part. So I would say probably between the two of them. I mean, there were there were stories like Luke's uh, you know adventure. They had a different version of him being on Tatooine and discovering mm-hmm. you know being at ben's hovel and discovering you know the the extra you know building his new lightsaber and stuff which of course has been totally flip-flopped around in canon in the current continuity with the comics it's totally different story but um yeah a lot of it was leia's quest to you know of course they're trying to catch up with boba fett the comics however the part the big part of it that i read was from the perspective of boba fett being chased while he's mm-hmm. trying to make his delivery because everybody everybody wants his Kool-Aid right everybody wants to grab that prize and get those get those sweet you know those sweet java dollars uh for that bounty um but uh, yeah you're right everything was a little a little bit different so you kind of looking at things from all different sides yeah mm-hmm. and and i was just reading this too that the comics were actually elsewhere too you, there was an excerpt from the comic published in nintendo power magazine two separate mini comics were released with micro machine toys and oh, Ertl model kits a pop-up comic was made which i know what a pop-up comic was entitled the battle of the bounty hunters a one-shot comic titled jo- the jabba tape also features tape? jizz man jizz Whoa. man around the time <laughs> Giz man, just man. I don't know. You know, and unfortunately, man. jizz Giz is the name of the style of music that mm-hmm. is played yep. by the Max Rebo band. So what you hear over the credits of this show is is the is the jizz whalers, right? I'm 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 not making this up. <laughs> Bob I'm not really the jizz whalers. <laughs> yeah. No woman, no cry. Uh, dun, well, it's dun, been nice seeing on YouTube. We've just gotten kicked off. Oh yes, uh, ouch. Yeah. And the, and the black band went up. Comic. No, this I think it's the sequel comic is the one that I've read. Isn't it called like Evolution? Evolution. Yeah, yes. I've got the I got a hard copy. Two thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've got a hard copy of that. Yeah. Exactly. Well, yeah, it, it, it was definitely a different time for it. Mark, can you talk about the video game? Uh, you know, it, it was funny because it was supposed to be it, they Nintendo allowed them to have more ramp, more memory to yeah. put in music that wasn't just like you know made with a synthesizer, um, mm. but the controller. They didn't allow them to see the controller. They had to put their hands in a box that was covered up with the controller because they were worried that, that, was, that would get out. And that was only with the prototype controller. That's funny. They had to put their hands in a box for the prototype controller, which was basically a Super Nintendo controller with a joystick glued onto it. That's how secretive and crazy <laughs> Nintendo is. That's so crazy. So but you can see the, the prototype of this damn thing. I mean, and this is I even mean, before the internet that anybody, if there was a if there was a YouTube clip out there that somebody could scroll through and all do polaroids all this, of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> polaroids. I mean, I've I've got, I've got the evidence of like shuffling a deck of cards. Oh, look at I mean, it. I mean, can you blame a Mark? I mean, everybody uses that controller type. The, the the, the triangle of, of death or whatever we call it. Of course. <laughs> Squid arm as far square, as that is. Square, so. square triangle circle. Square triangle circle. Um, and another yeah. fun fact about the uh, the game, the, the PC release, um, mm-hmm. the, the N64 version did like cut scenes, but they were basically... Uh, storyboards with oh, animation, right. limited animation and it was yeah wasn't it just the like was it yep. just like title card it would be like correct but the yeah, pc yeah. version actually had cg animated cutscenes oh with full voice that's right and had the cd audio and it was based on the voodoo 3d fx graphics card so you can buy it right now for five bucks on steam if you want to play this game and buy it readily available you know legally 
Mm-hmm. All right, I, I got to jump in here. Let's talk. Let, if we're talking, you know, we talked about Shizor. I gave you a little profile. Let's talk about Dash Rendar. Okay. Yeah. Now, if if you're watching, uh, there you go. If you're watching the video, Todd's holding it in front of his face. It's also over his shoulder. You see, not only Dash Rendar, he is wearing what's an equivalent of like. Uh, maybe like a, a knight's armor on the top side with he's shoulder a pads. Rifle character, Charlie. Yeah, he is. Exa- and then he's got the pads on top. So he's he's cable. He's cable. He is the original yeah. version of cable. Yeah. Um, he's he's got uh, he's got Han's hair. So a little bit of the scruffy fluff going down the five. Oh, is that the, all we took from Han? Yeah. Just well, yeah. Not, I don't think he I don't think yeah, he nailed it. That's your answer. He's a me. ginger. I don't know. Is there a famous Star Wars ginger? There is now. Yeah. Cow. And he, uh, Our, you know, yes, yeah. so you can see he's got the nine o'clock shadow and you see over his head, like I said, in right behind Todd, his ship, which is another Carillion vessel, but it's a, like a YT 1000 or 1350 or something. It's basically, it's not, it's the round part of the Falcon with another like corner on it. And then like a lightsaber sticking out of it. <laughs> and guns on the bottom. That's that. It's it's literally. It's like it, it reminds me of again a Star Trek reference. They in certain uh, big battle scenes they needed to show like ships that had been blown up. They would do something called a kit bash. They would literally yeah. take actual model kits, smash, build them, smash them with a hammer, and then film that and put them back together or film them apart. So the the Outlander looks like a smashed up lightsaber right. yes yeah, sm- s- uh, lightsaber plus uh pl- plus that like three quarters of the millennium falcon um mm. but again the fervor of having anything star wars made it okay but todd what did our dear friend john dub dash rendar oh god he you don't remember not kind to him he called him what is it uh flea market uh no, no he is and again here's a dead reference for you the kmart han solo Yep. Right. which was a place you could buy figures at because Todd, weren't you working at Kmart that summer? I was. In I was. <laughs> That's awesome. Again, coming into this fairly new, like I remember dash Rendar from the game and like, you know, in the game, especially the N64 game, you don't get the voice. You don't get this. I'm 12 years old. So I don't really care coming back into this and watching it now, much older. I'm like this whole thing. Kmart, Han Solo is such a perfect thing. My whole menu, <laughs> like current idea of it is like your, your mom says no, yeah. mom says we can't oh, have Han Solo because we already have, we Han, have, Solo have Han, Han Solo at home. Solo home. Yeah, and it's exactly. Dash Render and it sucks. Um, it's, I'm it's, sure it's, Dash it's, Render is someone's favorite Star Wars character. It's, but it's, it's, it's Eddie Murphy's stuff. It's Eddie Murphy's McDonald's sketch. We got McDonald's at yeah. home. That's where that expression came exactly. from. Exactly. Yeah. And the best part so is they had the toys. You know, they had the vehicles. So the vehicles that they released for this were an X, X-Wing, a Swoop, yeah. Boba Fett Slave 1, Millennium Falcon. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Ah. Boba Fett Starship. Thank you very much. Oh, that's true. Back then. Well, well yeah. it's Fire documented spread. here. Thank you so much. The, that yes. was, uh, Todd, when we when we had our, our friend Patrick from Hasbro on, you had gotten up to take a bio break, and he and I were chatting, and I was talking about what was behind him, and then he said, blah, 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 slave one. I said, oh, Patrick, don't you mean Boba Fett Starship? And we had a chuckle over that. So that was me joking with the head of global marketing for Hasbro for Star Wars and Indiana Jones. Pat, Pat, not to but, name drop, <laughs> but they did a Millennium Falcon. Yet they didn't do the Outrider. I mean, come right. on, of all things, so it's like, weird. hey, we love you so much. Your ship doesn't get any play. The Millennium well, Falcon. It's not even in the book. Maybe I don't know. Was it? It is. Maybe. It is. Yeah, yeah it is. Land, Lando's flying it around. Lando's but right. you know what? It, I bet it's two things. A, uh, it's a new sculpt. Uh, we're making the swoop was basically they take a speeder bike and throw some extra bits and bobs on it. Uh, the X wing they already had. And uh, the the mm-hmm. out uh, the outrider would have been a new sculpt. It would have been a new project that they probably, you know, probably also thinking that people would have no idea what it was, uh, and it would be a higher price point. You know, thirty bucks back in those days, I don't think people would buy it. I bet it was one hundred percent a marketing decision. Probably marketing and and, and cost of goods uh, was a reason that didn't get made. But um, and just looking through some of these other notes, because you had mentioned Micro Machines, which was awesome. They had a great line of both Star Wars and Star Trek back in the day. But um, the Micro Machines did do a full set of these. And I would not at all be surprised um, if they splurged to make the out, uh, Outrider for that. So we'll have to we'll have to scour uh, eBay to see what we can turn up. But I bet it's out there. Quite possibly. Uh 
as far as like lasting impressions of this stuff, you just heard my impression of Dash Rendar now, but there are some stuff like, is there any lasting impression, like fa- like favorite characters that kind of stuck with you that you wish got explored more or put into canon or anything like this story isn't canon, but are there any aspects elements, of it that you're kind elements, of like yeah. elements? Cause we, okay. We've had a couple of things drop. So we might as well like Dash Rendar was mentioned in the Star Wars uh solo the star wars story tales from vandar uh which was like the yeah, yeah, yeah. The canon companion novel to solo the movie um and jason fry who wrote that has admitted to including dash render in like a name mention yeah. as a joke because he is like it's again the, the because he you know, is off brand han solo um the Outrider has appeared in the special editions, I believe. Yeah, yeah. If, if you, Mos Eisley. Yeah, if you go to this last blurb uh, here on our source article, uh, it said, mm-hmm. yeah, the special edition re-release of A New Hope includes swoop bikes, the ASP labor droids, which were a big part of this. I think mm-hmm. that was Dash Rendar's um, droid companion on a ship was an ASP labor droid. And okay. the Outrider itself, because you're right just a a few scant months after this came off in my least favorite part of the special edition of new hope is when they're going into most Eisley. particularly the first release was was awful it was really awful because the just the animation was terrible and george grew it over time technology got better it it tended to to look better but yes it's it's not at all hard to spot the outrider taken off in the distance as they're riding in um, but yeah, the, the, the swoop, they also said the uh, Sentinel class landing craft known as the Imperial landing craft made its first appearance in this book. And then you see that again in A New Hope when they have the uh, look, sir, droids, the ship that takes off behind them, which was not in the original film. That scene starts with that thing taking off. And this is great. I didn't even know this. Shizor makes a cameo appearance this is what made him canon at the pod race in star Wars episode one, the phantom menace, a micro machines model was used to portray him. So the famous story, no, the famous story is the stands where they had people tied you're laughing, but your mic is off. So (laughs) we're not getting the full effect. Um, The stands of that pod race, the people watching it were hundreds, if not thousands of colored Q-tips. This is, this is, this is a real story. um, And one of them was Shizor. So that was his, literally his first canonical appearance was in 1999. Yeah. Canonical, canonical Q. You know what? If you're going to give this episode a wacky name, canonical Q-tips gets my vote. Canonical Q-tips. I like that. Uh, Um, So with all that stuff, is there, are you guys happy with those little weird references or do you wish something of this kind of stuck around a little longer. Uh, Todd, let's start with you. You know, one of the things that I love that they did, which was one of my favorite parts of Return of the Jedi, was Leia getting to really showcase some heroism, some yes. individualism, uh, when she wasn't basically put in the for- the background as Bausch. Boosh, Bausch, yeah. what do you call it? I loved love, that love character. Boosh. I loved the, the outfit. And she made a return. Of, well, actually, probably have been her first appearance as Bouch, um, because yeah, that, you know, canonically, three dates well, returns. And, and the book also tells you in, in, in what is now non-canon how she got the outfit, or they explained that it belonged to another dude, and blah blah blah. Yeah. So yeah, I, I just love that. So uh, I, and I, I, this is something I always talk about. I want more stories of the original cast in stories, whatever. Yeah era you want to give them i don't care but the fact that leah has all you know princess leah has this 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 kind of like mark and you can reference this as well chic you know princess yeah. zelda right yeah. Yeah. doesn't get her real due and we want mm-hmm. more of it obviously there's no cry same thing with leah you know we she's gone too soon we didn't get enough time yeah. with her and this is just great that we got an mm-hmm. era of her that was amazing so i want to see once again, I want to see more of Leia and the crew and with mm-hmm. her as Bausch and she could have her own adventures. That would be amazing. You I know, mean, she's yeah. going off yeah. and, and you know, they're and all she, doing those things and they come back together. I don't know. And, I want and then she, she has, they did there. I mean, there was a five issue, uh, Leia limited series, right? When the Marvel comics started in 2015, uh, she had a great novel about five or six years ago called bloodlines that talked about how she left the Senate 
five or six years prior to a force awakens and how she started the resistance. Charlie, I'm in the star Trek room of this. If it's not on the screen, it well, didn't happen. But, the, the, but that's unfortunately for you, it, it's not true, but with star Trek, know, it absolutely only is. So many people are reading those things. That, like, that's very, that's very, yeah. It's very, tens of thousands it's people very are versus everybody, every little girl who, or little boy or, yeah. or adult who loved princess Leia. Yeah. Wants to yeah. see her on screen again, doing cool kick-ass stuff. Right. So in a couple more years, and they One can recast style. Millie Bobby Brown as as Princess Leia. I think I think a Clone War style animated thing, man, would be so good. Set in this kind of timeline, or yeah. even after, yeah. uh, Return of the Jedi, like show what that crew's I doing. The Sith art style, and doing Mark. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I think that'd be great. Yeah. Um, because everyone other than Todd really loved Anakin after the everyone, Clone Wars. everyone yeah. other than Todd. It's like, Todd's not uh, able to let go of the really glaring. I'm an army of one. He's Come the on. really glaring personality, uh, psychopath, psycho, you know, serial killer <laughs> tendencies. I mean, everybody, Todd, lo- you, everybody you loves get, a psycho. <laughs> you got you got to draw a line somewhere. You really do. So everybody loves a child Charlie, killer. What, what, what about you? Is there? Uh, uh, you know, I I really enjoyed. She's or as a character because it was our first look into the real underbelly that uh, of of the crime world that exists within the Star Wars universe that has really been fleshed out subsequently. Solo did it. We saw an awful lot of it uh, in 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 Clone Wars. But again, yeah. like Todd, like Todd said, you know, Clone Wars is a bit niche, uh, especially in reference to uh, you know shows that are on now. You know, when you're referencing like, well, this happened in Rebels, and then something is mm-hmm. live action, and they're like, I don't watch Star Wars cartoons, so I don't have you know, so the appeal might be somewhat limited. Um, but to your 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 big picture, your you know your ten thousand foot view uh, of Star Wars. I, you know, this was your first exploration of the underbelly that everything wasn't, mm-hmm. you know, laser swords and spaceships. And it, it was just it was gritty ground level. It was the Star Wars mob because, yeah, you had Jabba, but you didn't really learn anything about the huts and the fact that they were this whole enormous crime family on a planet with this the all these trade routes and the you know the the the, the spice which was the drugs um you know that was the narcotics industry within this and and how the black mm-hmm. sun tied back into that so i found him to be very interesting and then his his allure with women and and how i i love it you know how in the end of it in a dick swinging contest with anakin which is funny because Anakin probably didn't actually have one because uh, he got burned up <laughs> alive uh, in a dick swinging contest with Darth Vader in the in the end of this novel. Sorry about the spoiler. Vader just blows him out of the sky uh, because he just he, he just it's like he's pushing him too far. And, you know, mm-hmm. and he's like, in, you know, nothing's going to come between uh, Vader, Vader and Papa Palpatine. So Vader does what he's got to do and takes the competition. O.U.T. Yeah. But anyway, I dug uh, the character and I dug the black son. And I do, I do like how he's playing both sides. Like he, mm-hmm. uh, and, and to Todd's point, like Leia jumps right in and she knows it, that this is like a crime boss, but she's like, screw right. it. I got to go rescue Han. I got to do this thing. I got to like, how do we get in with these criminals? Who do I know that's shifty? Let's go find like Lando and his friends and then get in with these super bad people um, right. just to try to do whatever I need to do. And she's a badass. And then he's just so scummy. And he's like playing her, playing both sides. He's like, let's set this up. So if the Empire wins, we're good with Palpatine. But if the Rebels win, they remember that we did this for them. Like, right. they're, they're Gre- so the skids. realistically like kind of portrayed as, you know, the crime bosses people. that are going yeah. to, uh, those cockroaches that are going to to come out of any scenario, right? It's, right, it's, right, it's right. really interesting. True, um, true. You mentioned Vader being a badass in this and just, you know, just uh, taking out the competition. But there's also some really cool introspective parts of Vader. And I know we've seen Vader in the comics and do some different things. And uh, I I did like the um, Vader trying to heal himself and, and thinking that he could kind of almost regrow limbs or heal himself more. Yeah. through the force but when he does that it makes him happy that he was able to kind of heal himself a little bit and then that happiness poisoned the dark side and he started dying because the the dark side was basically keeping him alive so is this weird little like i can heal myself but it makes me happy and that kills me so it's like this 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 really sounds like it really sounds like a johnny cash song i hurt myself today it's the Uh, third time you got me singing in this uh, episode let's keep it going and then then some really weird like i like those weird minute details and charlie already mentioned that they're 
redoing Luke building his green lightsaber, but that's always been my favorite lightsaber. So I love yeah. that first iteration of like, here's Luke in the desert, like learning from Obi-Wan's books about how to do that. Um, it's, it's all in books. It's but also Rainbow. random, Star Wars random force facts, like Vader quoted, uh, he'd be able to feel Luke if he was anywhere within 50 kilometers of him. Um, Make a lot of That's sense. They, 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 they have the metric system in Star Wars. <laughs> they gotta have some <laughs> kind of system. Old. They They've probably got, use uh, everyone but the United States and what's the other country that doesn't use metric? It's like some probably weird like the Grand Cayman Antar- Islands, Antarctica. It's, it's, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's um, uh, but and, it, yeah, it's like very very specific force yeah. power uh, limits and things. If, uh, and like he's talking, and we've seen some force powers in the sequels now used uh, uh, over, uh, you know, a, a video conference yeah. kind of thing. Uh, but in this, Vader wants choking. to choke. He wants to choke. She, she's or mentions it a few times. Cause they're doing a little three way call with, yeah. uh, <laughs> with, <laughs> with, uh, with Palpatine. And he's like, yeah, if I was closer than uh, a few little head. years away, I'd be choking this, uh, this bitch. Um, Is this how he stops you from talking? Weird. Like squeezes your lips. <laughs> Does Vader have have to choke uh, a bitch? Yeah, he wants to several times in this novel. Uh, It's so it's really I like those weird little details that that you get from novels that they can like throw something strange in there of like yeah yeah. why why fifty kilometers like Luke is fifty one kilometers away and he's just like fifty three point seven and he's like. (laughs) Which like you a striking now, order. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if it's fifty, cannot, 50 kilometers away. Yeah, I, 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 I have a warrant. Speaking I, I of, picture, yeah, picture Luke knowing exactly where Vader is and just being like, "I'm not touching Dad's force bubble. I'm not touching, not touching Dad's you. force bubble." Here. I'm, over here. I'm over here. I'm over here. Over here. He's got his tape measure. He's like jumping over the line back and forth. I'm yeah. over here. No, I'm here. I'm, here. I, I, I'm in Australia. I'm in an America. I'm in Australia. I'm in an America. Vader can sense me. Vader can't sense me. It's great. So uh, speaking of Luke, if I can slide this in, Star Wars fashion, he is wearing his black Return of the Jedi outfit, but in typical, what have I always said about Star Wars cosplay? Mark, you're, you're a burgeoning cosplayer. What makes a Star Wars cosplay? Belt, boots. boots, and a vest. He is wearing a tan vest. That's what Ooh, sets him apart. Is that the Dwight yeah. Schrute of cosplay? Yes. Airs, boots. <laughs> Battlestar Galactica. Battlestar Galactica. Boots, yeah. belt, uh, Vest, vest or jacket i guess so i guess it's four things that's a star Here's wars a, outfit one fun fact too before we leave i know we're gonna wrap this up um the only media that i know everybody probably would have seen on uh, shadows of the empire there were toy commercials put right. out there you go all the networks <clears throat> that was probably i mean i don't know of any other commercials that would have been for this and it's so funny because in the back of the toy even it says from the Star Wars multimedia adventure, Shadows of the Empire. And this is before the internet. I'm like, how did they even advertise this? Like, is this like on Nickelodeon? Is this in like yeah. Game yeah, I, where, World yeah, Magazine? Right. Where I mean, how it? does this get out? And how does it get to the, the core of everyone? Like, Mark, you said your, your age. I mean, <clears throat> Power Rangers episodes, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, were they yeah, showing this? Yeah, you, sure you're basically, yeah. yeah, basically syndicated after school uh, kids programming. So yeah, he's like, what else? It was, so Power Rangers was big, big there. What else was, I mean, that was before Teletubbies. What the hell were kids Turtles, watching back Power then? Rangers. Turtles, yeah. Turtles, yeah. Uh, Batman. Batman, Batman the Animated Series. Batman the Animated Series. Is that pre-Pokemon? Um, yeah. Yeah, it might have been. Yeah. It was, um, uh, pre, yeah, but, definitely. But yeah, Todd, think, I would for yes. sure think I would for sure think Nickelodeon would be the big one. Because, um, yeah, or the Disney Channel. Well, I don't know. I sp- potentially. Yeah. Oh, no. Disney Channel had no ads, Charlie. That was the thing. Oh, did they not? I did Oh, no. I, that was a big thing. I was on cable. So and there was no ads on Disney Channel. Oh, so I you did, guys I knew about all of this stuff by what magazines and like that? Kind I, of stuff? I don't know or how we would have even figured found out that the book was coming Comic out. Ads? I don't have any idea. Wizard Magazine, Charlie. Wizard Magazine. That would be, yeah, yeah. Oh, Wizard Wizard Magazine. Wizard Magazine. Yeah, I mean, Todd and I had two <laughs> subscriptions that came into our apartment. We had Wizard Magazine and we had Entertainment, Entertainment Weekly, Weekly, which Todd called, called, it, called, it, called it. He called it the shit in times because it was always in the bathroom. <laughs> Charlie called it the Bible. <laughs> Well, it was because yeah. yeah, that's that's where you found out about. It. And oh, I guess the third one would have been TV Guide, uh, which mm. which boomers still read because my mother will get us a subscription every so often, and I'm like, I mean, Thanks, internet like, internet was a thing at the time. I mean, but we're talking dial up modems. Virginia. We're talking like BB, you know, bulletin oh, boards. BBS. Yeah, yeah, there really, you go. Their <clears throat> IGN didn't even exist at the time. This is going back. So like even like any type of like 
mainstream like entertainment websites ten, really yeah. wasn't. 10 years yeah. before social media. Yeah, cuz we uh, yeah, yeah, Facebook didn't even really become a public thing until 07 08. So yeah, this was this was before all of that. So yeah, Wizard Magazine. Oh, I you know, Wizard and Star Starlog was still around back then. So yeah, basically yeah. honest to god magazines that you would get in your comic shop you would get them at you know barnes and noble or walden books we had back then you know or anywhere you know anywhere you know in your, your a kroger or a meyer you know and it, like a grocery store that would have mm -hmm. magazines and stuff that that's where you would you would score that stuff or you'd have you know the the poly bag subscription that oh it came with a one half issue of rob liefeld super extreme x factor special or whatever you know what i mean <laughs> Oh, da the Dash Rendar Rob Liefeld special. If only we had taken pictures of our college dorms, Mark, in that era with all the posters. I, the I, I, magazine I, I have the some. Wall. I have oh some. I, I have all my photo albums. I may have to break some out. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll go go take a peek when we wrap up here. There we <laughs> go. That'll be a Patreon exclusive. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> we'll put that in the Patreon only thread on Discord. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Uh, last question for you, fellas. Uh, and it, it kind of a question or, or thought thing last the final thought um we and we mentioned this earlier you know that this was novel at the time to have a standalone video game and novel and comic series for this big event that didn't really follow a, a movie or, or something else no um, rules just right <laughs> Right. So that this was this was different, right? We had like I said, we had Super Star Wars and Super Return of the Jedi and all that kind of stuff for Super Nintendo, but like yeah. this was kind of its own thing. Um do you think we owe a lot of current Star Wars to this model being successful? Uh do you think because right now we have Jedi Survivor that's its own standalone thing. We haven't seen mm -hmm. Cal and the crew in any other medium, so that's its own event well, video they except cal and crew have been a part of the figure line they've been in black series at least right yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh, that, that's yeah. that's at least one wrinkle uh i don't know if he's mm -hmm. appeared in comics um so. i don't think so um <laughs> But yeah, you're we right. Have, Cal, uh, Cal's a great example of that. Uh, the Battlefront was a great example of that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, High Republic happening in be between comics and books, books. soon yeah. to be, uh, you know, TV with the Acolyte. Yeah, um, and we have a little bit of like the the Young Jedi Adventures, the TV show for kids, kind of happening right. in that High Republic era. Um, is you know do do we owe do you guys think we owe that to shadows or is it just kind of like that's multimedia where we think, are now right like I mean I I wouldn't necessarily say it didn't exist before that but I'd be hard pressed yeah. certainly within this context to think of something that mirrored mm -hmm. this so I mean I I don't I, I think the and I'm not going to say this was an outrageous success like it lit the world on fire and people never stopped talking about it but for those of us who were kids of the 80s like todd and myself uh who grew up in star wars and 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 all of that fervor uh and then you know this was wedged in between when the special editions came back out on the big screen it, it scratched that itch that even the most you know cynical and ardent of us gen xers had about star wars by touching something you know in in, in, a, in a good way uh touching something very special about our youth um and in doing something different um and taking advantage of you know innovations in technology within the you know the 15 years in between uh that were you know video games and a cd and uh you know comic books and things like that the, the micro machines and the different to the toys and stuff which were kind of endemic um and and todd i love how you slapped in here if you look at todd did you th toss this in here i can't believe oh, yeah, can i did i can't believe you can still buy this so quick story that I'll tell again, and then Mark, I'll kick it back to you. Um, in the summer of 1996, uh, at Argos Books, which is a used bookstore, which was my childhood comic shop, is here in, in right here in Grand Rapids. Uh, Jim, who was the owner, I, I had known him for 10 years before that because I went to that shop since I was 10 years old, so I was 20. Uh, and I walked in there, and I did notice that he had this exact item. It is a PVC vinyl statue of Prince Shizor made by Applause. And it was on sale for probably $17.99, which is Todd. Todd did find it uh, here at the current Walmart uh, site. And I looked Amazing. at it and I said, I don't need a piece of crap like that. And I went on about my life. 20 years later, 2016, 
uh, Jim owned the shop at that time. I believe he was an employee back in 1996. And I'm chatting with Jim, and I'm like, uh, Jim, you have this Prince Shizu. This thing has been here for 20 years. He says, yeah, nobody wants something like that. I said, uh, he said, what will you give me for it? And I reached into my pocket. I'm not a cash guy. I said, I have $3. He said, give me $3. Have a I have yeah. lint. Yeah. And Tums. <laughs> yes. And, and, and I gave him those three things. And, and it was, yeah. Uh, and so Prince Shizor came home with me. Uh, it was either in 2016 or potentially in 2017. John and Todd and myself started our SFU three person summer movie wager. It's very exciting because there's a beautiful end to the story. Uh, and even though it was broken up by, you know, the lack of movies uh, because of COVID in 20, I think 2020 and 2021, the winner uh, got Shizor shipped to him for a year. Now it is during that time it was divided between John and myself going back and forth from Washington state to Michigan this year. And the results are not official. It looks like Todd has won for the very first time. And Shizor will You're be cursed traveling. It, Charlie. Mark, he's cursed it. This no. is it's gonna go somebody's no, I, gonna come in and make a hundred and eighty million dollars this weekend. It's only it's only because we didn't count the sound of freedom. But it looks like Todd has won. So I'm I'm congratulating Todd. I mean, Todd, Labor Day weekend is this weekend. So you've won. Just be magnanimous in your victory. You did great. And Shizer will be yours for a full calendar year. Um, and we'll see if you can hang on to him. Woo! Oh boy. And if if folks, if you want this figure actually it's there's one available on amazon as we speak it's 12.99 get it oh, while it's hot. even cheaper than the walmart link you shared with us so um mm -hmm. oh, only one left yeah 17.99 good news still in stock oh my and the other good news is if you want any of the action figures of shadows empire literally you can buy all of them and they i think the, the most expensive one is the luke uh in his imperial guard disguise at 21 dollars. everything else mm -hmm. Under twenty one dollars. I'm, I'm telling you, any toy show you go to, the the toy the, the the figure that Todd has, and then the shoes or that I have were, were were either five or ten bucks. So any toy show you go to your local town toy show, pay your five dollars to get in, and some vendor will have Shadows of the Empire stuff because you can barely give it away. So mm -hmm. mm, 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 mm. so that's 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 a, a look back at Shadows of the Empire. I mean, it, you know, we're still talking about it all this time later. So it definitely less left At some sort of, of lasting us. impression. Yeah. Uh, and and, and <laughs> potentially anyone who is listening to this and, and certainly wants to pick up the thread uh, and talk mm -hmm. to us about it. There's a lot of great ways to do that. You can come to our secret friends unite discord. It's a vibrant community filled with, you know, probably a hundred people talking about all kinds of different stuff. Um, so I'm hoping after this episode drops this week, that there will be just an, an outpouring in that star Wars server channel talking about shadows yeah. of the empire we'll see if we i'm right get, schloss ritter did uh chime in because I, I asked if anyone had memories he said i read the book back then but don't remember much now we got crewman d bane said i remember trying the n64 game a long time ago but i wasn't much of a gamer when i was younger um yeah. and i i was like a more of a gamer back then um but Apparently sucked at the game because I couldn't couldn't get past Boba Fett. Bo Boba Fett was your great white great white whale. That's it. I just downloaded that game actually, so I'm gonna have to go back. The N64 was the enemy of you, Mark. Well, Todd, if he can download that, why can't you hook me up with that GI Joe game that I want? It's, it's an Charlie, emulator, I definitely right? Definitely can. It might take some. Uh, <laughs> it might take some mental health uh, for you to like realize that the pass was not that good. But I, I can help you. I want it. I want no. T yeah, uh, Mark. Just a quick sidebar. Um, I, I'm on a, a GI Joe kick these days. There was a um, a very low rent game for the Commodore 64 in 1985, and Goodness. that was the computer we had. It was a it was a floppy disk based game. Um, mm -hmm. that it was just a, Todd, how do you describe that style where it's just, they're just moving around like, like little ants. Oh, on it's, it's bad, Mark. It's like, it's like you've got <laughs> a, a map, you go in there and then you've got two characters that fight each other. Yeah. It's kind of like the Atari uh, combat tanks where right. they're going around. Okay. They aren't, you got to shoot each other, but that's about it. It's like, it's yeah. And there's, a, there's, there's another one with a helicopter and it fires. They got, got to blow up oil drums and stuff. It's, it's fantastic. I really Todd, I want it. Mm -hmm. I want it. 
Make it happen. Uh, it'll take some emotional support to get it going, Charlie. Okay. You might have to <laughs> have April uh, help you through that. But I can I can tell you where to get it, okay. and how to get it. But the actual yeah. doing it uh, that will probably rely on April All right. to actually help you out with that. I'm into it. I'm into it. Let, we'll just make like, it. We'll... Just like I played Shadows of the Empire, I tried playing it on my. Oh, I've got it right here, Mark. My little device Ooh, right here. Very nice. Yep. It was impossibly insane to play. I think I almost gave myself a hemorrhage. Um, not <laughs> yep, so great. So I it. may buy yep. the Steam version just for, mm. you know, shits and giggles oh, yeah. to hear Zizor's, you know, the dulcet tones of Zizor's voice. Oh, um, you yeah, have to, you, I, you know what? Do the rest of us a favor and maybe you record a bit of that and share that with us because I want to hear, I want to hear Shizor speak. That's okay. Awesome. Good deal. That was in that, the, the, the gameplay version that you sent, uh, you sent was over. It? Actually, was yeah. it the same? Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah. if it had voice acting, then it was the PC version. That's the PC version. If it was yeah. not, oh, then it gotcha. was not. My, my, my. Well, unless I'm very much mistaken, Mark, I think that takes us up out of this show, if I'm not mistaken. It so, does, yeah. friends, thank you for joining us on this trip back in time, almost, almost 30 years, to Shadows of the Empire. We've had a great time. Thank you, as always, for joining us. Mark, where do people find you out there on the socials? Well, they can find me at the underscore Canardian on Instagram, threads, TikTok, and sometimes X. I am still checking that from time to time. Todd, where can they find you? Um, at X as well. At Tioxtra is my my handle. I'm trying to do more on threads. Um, it's just a little difficult because of some. They don't have DMs. They don't have other things. But uh, mm -hmm. I, you know, just kind of holding on to X until that dies and then it forces what is whatever is next coming but yeah obviously there i do a lot of the uh updating of the website and stuff like that too so check out the website because i do add our youtube stuff there as well so people have a one-stop shop to see all the things we're doing yes at Night. yes yes mm -hmm. yes and i i'm hanging in there on x as well because i hate to change you can find me at the c3 go ahead and spell it out as always, my lovely wife April and I do run the USS Grand Petoskey, one of the biggest chapters of Starfleet, the international Star Trek fan club in the world. We are based here in West Michigan, but I actually run Region 13 for SFI, which is Michigan and Eastern Canada. If you're a trekker within the sound of my voice and you're down with the Star Trekking, want to meet other trekkers in your neighborhood, please find us on socials or a website of that name and I'll be happy to direct you. Once at one last time, thank you for joining us. I'm going to tell you that sharing is caring. And to keep on trucking. Todd, thanks for joining us again. May the force be with you. Rex, play us out. Do <laughs> do